report on this computer. So Audrey um, uh, agreed from our student board to come in and talk a little bit about uh, her team. She's on first robotics competition team, uh, 2197 Las Pumas from New Prairie High School in New Carlisle, Indiana. Um, and uh, Las Pumas uh, has been uh, around now for, I think maybe 13 years. Um, 16 this year. 16. Uh, <laughs> COVID year calendar math. Um, a couple of chairman's awards. Um, just one, one chairman's award. Just one. It was uh, 2020, actually. That's right. Um, but uh, but some other awards under your belt. I know that Las Pumas has been quite an award-winning team over the years. Uh, some entrepreneurship awards, some gracious professionalism awards, things like that at our events. Uh, a really well-rounded team. Um, and uh, and so. Uh, Audrey, why don't you take it away and talk a little bit about uh, the approach that your team has taken um, in terms of recruiting and retaining uh, young women? Uh, yeah, so actually, this is a problem that I identified actually just around last year was that there were very few women on our team. And so the way I thought the best way to go around fixing this was not to re try to reach students while they're in high school. Most girls, by the time they reach high school, they've made up their mind that they're not doing robotics, they're not interested in robotics, that this isn't for them. So we decided that the best way to target women and getting them to join is that we have to start early. So we started a summer camp for elementary and middle school girls at our high school. Um, it was one week over the summer and two hours per session. And we had elementary and middle school combined. We originally wanted to do separate, but we didn't have enough entries in the middle school side to grant their own session. So we just combined them with the elementary schoolers. And so we had a two hour long session and it was 15 minutes. We started the day with 15 minutes. It was kind of a check-in and a warm up game. We then had a 30 minute lesson, a 60 minute activity and another 15 minute game and when parents could come pick up. So each day we covered a different subtopic on our team. So the first day we did mechanical and our main activity for that was they got to play with VEX robots and we have clamps in our shop and middle school, like elementary school girls have a strange desire to just destroy things. I don't know why, but it's that age, just like to destroy. So they actually got to use just the clamps in the shop, use their proper safety glasses and just destroy things. Like they found that very engaging. Um, and then for our second day, we had our CAD sub team covered. And so we taught them how to use Autodesk Inventor. And then we gave them different challenges they could use on Autodesk Inventor. Um, for the electrical day, uh, we made hex bugs. So I don't know if you know what hex bugs are, but they're little tiny little robots. And they just kind of buzz around. And they're a lot of fun. But they're also kind of expensive. And there's a lot of cheaper ways you can make them. So if you take the head of a toothbrush, a little uh, vibrating motor and a little tiny watch battery. And you stick, you know, make a little electrical circuit with the motor and the battery and stick it on top of a toothbrush head. It'll move around just like a little robot. So that's a great activity to do with uh, kids. And they really liked it. Um, for the programming day, we did binary bracelets. So we taught them like the basics of binary code. And then beforehand, we had their name spelled out and what each letter was in binary. And then we said, okay, like, the red beads are one and the blue beads are zeros. And then they got to put out all their beads and the ones and zeros, like so code their name and then string it and make it into their own little bracelet. So especially that's a great activity to do if you're just having girls is, you know, most elementary school boys probably aren't, oh, I want to make a bracelet. But that's something that you can specifically target elementary and middle school girls with. So that made it a really great activity. And then for our business awards uh, marketing and media day, uh, we made buttons. So that's a common factor in a lot of first teams is a big part of the culture is having buttons. So they got to draw on their own little paper, their own little button design, and they got to put it in and make the button themselves. So that was a lot of fun too. And we actually had a lot of great feedback from this. Um, we did a survey and this was something once again that we want to change this coming up year is we did a survey where we were like, rank how confident you were in this scale before and after. 
So this year I'd like to have them fill out the before actually before and the after after again. And so we also rank how was your interest in joining a robotics team before and after? And on most most of the uh, forms that were filled out, uh, they ranked a greater interest in joining a robotics team in the future. So that was really promising just to see that growth in having an increased interest in robotics. And we also, a detail that we gave to the parents beforehand after they signed up was we said, this is all of our team's social media pages. Please follow our team's social media pages and we'll be posting pictures throughout the days um, so they can get pictures of their girls and get more updates from us about what's going on. And we got a, a lot of positive feedback from the parents as well as the girls about their time throughout the week. And just some other little fun details we did was also for name tags, instead of making traditional name tags, we got them all button name tags. We made them beforehand. So then they had another little keepsake, another little first related detail. We also split them into two alliances beforehand. So similar to an FRC competition or FTC competition. So then different like games throughout the day, we'd say, oh, you get a point for your alliance. And then it just created a lot of fun um, camaraderie between the girls. Oh, they get to be on their own team and just some good like healthy competition. It made it a really fun experience. And so actually the prize we did was we promised the girls at the end of the week, you're going to have a water balloon fight. They were so excited for this. When I told them at the very end of the week, okay, guys, it's time for the water balloon fight. I think the screaming made me almost deaf. And so then we said the winning, the winning alliance gets to throw the first water balloon. So just like those little fun things also made it um, just a great, uh, like a really fun experience for the girls, made it like a really supportive environment. So then the main goal of this was to make them feel like, oh yeah, we do have a place in STEM that this is a fun, good environment for us. And the last thing we also asked them for, what would you like to see in the future? And I would recommend providing them some sort of food. Food was highly, highly recommended. Um, so that's just a bit about what we did. Well, that sounds great. So this last summer was the first time you did that? Yes, that was our first running. Okay. Now, after the summer then, have you done anything during the year to maybe stay in touch with them, do any special social media posts or reach out to the parents or? Um, well, like I said, we do have a lot of the parents on our social media pages now, and we have been keeping up with posts on our social media pages. So we're hoping these parents will still be seeing um, the connection to this team and all the great stuff going on in it. Great. And then it was a great way to tie them into your social media to say, we're going to be posting photos all week and it kind of will hook them in and, and keep them on because people, once they follow you, they don't usually unfollow you. So that's good. I was going to ask, um, did you just have the uh, women on your team leading this event or did you have the entire team leading the event? Um, we did specifically only have female team members as the camp counselors for the week. Yes. Yeah, so I suppose once you get to the point where you have enough, then then you can do that. Maybe if you're uh, trying this kind of thing at first, you might have to use mixed gender students to kind of build up your uh, your female base. Uh, so this is just one idea of, of planting a seed um, to grow that pipeline uh, in terms of getting them involved. And I know that uh, Las Pumas also um, uh, over the years has mentored a lot of um, FLL, uh, First Lego League Explorer, F First Lego League Challenge teams, and, and some FTC teams. So you, you all have a pretty solid pipeline of first leading into your high school team, isn't that right? Yeah, we have three, two or three FLL teams at our middle school right now, and we do still go over and mentor them, and we give them CAD lessons. So we have a pretty strong base coming in. Okay. And then hopefully then, will you all start trying to track um, like if you'll see increased female participation or, or is that something that you're kind of purposely watching and tracking? Yeah, that's what we're going to look for. Obviously, I won't be on the team at that point that we see that much growth happening. But yeah, we do look at this being more of a long term project. So if you want, this isn't necessarily a quick way to get females on team, but this is uh, something that over time will really help create a good model for getting them in probably more 
uh, earlier in our conversation, before we started the recording, I talked about not liking the word sustainable in certain things, but this sounds like a more, it does sound like a more sustainable method. Like there might be quicker ways to get some high school young women to join the team right out of the gate, but maybe you might lose quite a few in attrition to not necessarily having built that culture of identifying as a person of STEM or, um, or, or other things. Are there things that you're all doing as a team this year? So you did that in the summer, but then as a team, when you look at your team culture, coaches and things like that, what goes on within your team that, that for example, why do you stick around? And why do some of the young women on your team stick around? Well, we right now still have a small uh, group of uh, women on our team. So really we kind of create our own kind of culture and friendship among ourselves. So it's almost just like, you know, paying a little just extra attention to each other, you know. I have a very good friend um, who's a senior and she's, you know, always kind of been a role model for me on the team. And so then I'm trying to pass that on to younger member, to one of our younger female members on our team. So it's just kind of something we've developed for ourselves at this point is trying to create a, just a good female strong bond on our team. Okay. So maybe in other words, if I hear you right, maybe if, uh, if we have some coaches out there listening that are trying to create that culture for their teams is maybe try to provide some opportunities for, if they have, if they have just a few provide uh, young women, provide an opportunity for them to create kind of that, those types of relationships. Okay. Are there other things where you're sitting now and you're, you're, thinking about like these coaches out there and teams we have some teams that have very few and, and maybe even some out there without any young women are the, are there uh, any things that some of them could do that you're thinking about like your team in the next year or so besides starting a camp for elementary middle school kids are there some things they could try to do to create an, an environment where young women might like as a freshman and sophomore decide to join um, so what I would suggest is really reaching out to your female members and really encouraging them to try to take leadership roles on our team or on your team. So on our team, we actually have a unreasonable, I don't want to say unreasonably, but a strangely high amount of females on leadership roles, like around 50, last year, around 50% of our leadership roles were filled by women. And we only had that was most of the women on the team was on, were on leadership roles. And when you're on leadership roles, I feel like you naturally are then might do more with, um, you know, promoting your team. So we had an outreach or a step up day at our school. And so naturally it was a lot of leaders on our team uh, running the step up day for the robotics team, uh, promoting our classroom and stuff like that. So I would say, try to get your, uh, females to be on leadership roles because that's who your next generations will see as the face of your robotics team. And if you see women on the robotics team, you're going to feel more like that's a comfortable place for you to be a part of. Okay, that's some good stuff. Real quick about the um, leadership roles. Uh, can you talk briefly about the leadership structure of your team? So, um, maybe just like, you know, is, is it called a team captain, team president or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and then also, could you talk briefly about how are those leadership positions um, chosen? Uh, yes, yeah. so we have a team president, a team vice president, and then we have six sub teams, a mechanical, electrical, programming, CAD, BAM, which stands for business awards, marketing and media, and safety. And so each of those roles are entirely student elected is, you have to, we'll have a meeting at the start of the year around August. You'll have to put your name on the ballot. You'll have to go up in front of the entire team, give your speech on why you want to be in that leadership role, why you think it would be good for you. And then it's your peers that have to go and vote for you. Um, our adults do have the final say. And so they have, if they see, oh, all of our students vote for someone, but they really don't feel like that might be a good leadership option, then they will veto it. But I don't think that's ever happened in our team history. Well, good. That's good to know about the leadership structure and how you all work that. Um, and uh, I, I hear a lot of similar structures in terms of kind of like the top role, like 
a captain or a president, and then a lot of teams have those um, sub team roles. I like your BAM business and media marketing. Um, that's that's good. So the business and media marketing um, is that is that also do they take on a lot of the awards type things? Then, like if there's award submissions, chairman's award, Woody Flowers, things like that. Yeah. So I'm the BAM lead for our team, and so even though I'm the lead of the team, what I'm actually hands on doing is writing the essays most of the time. Oh, the chairman's award. Okay. Or the Woody Flowers submissions. Um, yeah, I know some teams um, do uh, things differently in terms of that too. Um, how do you all go through the process of, um, you know, you don't have to talk about who you nominate or anything, but do you have a similar process you all use for uh, nominating uh, mentors for the Woody Flowers Award? Um, actually, no, it's been very informal. Um, we, for a long time, we were just nominating our lead mentor over and over and over again until he got it. And then, so just recently, we kind of unanimously picked a mentor that we feel would be very deserving. Um, the rest Not of that Mr. Team, Hobart wasn't very deserving. Yeah, I mean, he won, so then, yeah. <laughs> he was we, deserving, we another, right, yeah. We, yeah, we picked, and then we picked another uh, very deserving mentor. And we just, the team, you know, we've, we kind of listen to feedback from the rest of our team. How do you feel about this? And we have not heard a single person say, oh, we should not be, you know, nominating him. And so then it's just kind of a private decision among ourselves about who you want to nominate. Okay. Well, great. Audrey, um, I, we've got a few other mentors on um, right now. I, I'd be willing to, if you're willing to stick around just for a minute or two, we'll take a few more questions um, if, if we have any more. Um, uh, we've got, I don't know if, if you're on the call and you'd like to ask Audrey a question, um, I'm sure she'd even take questions about, uh, meeting the governor, but, um, but yeah, if you've got questions about the, um, the female participation thing, ask away. I have a question about, um, you know, you said that about 50% of your leaders are, are female. So do you ever have like meetings with just your female leaders to take kind of a pulse check to kind of make sure they're feeling, you know, not just represented because if they're 50%, that's good representation, but to make sure that they're feeling heard within the overall leadership structure? Um, so, so far we haven't done a lot of uh, lead meetings. Um, I am planning on running for president next year for our team, and that's something I would like to instate. Um, Erin Saul is having uh, lead meetings, but no, we don't have anything specifically right now with just the female leaders. Um, like I said, we do have our own kind of like culture and friendships sometimes. So that kind of stuff would be discussed. Right. Um, but that would be actually really good. Thank you for that idea. That would well, when really you mentioned that you have your kind of, uh, you kind of bond as a group, I wondered if you kind of open it up to discussions about that, just to make sure that that goes beyond just representation, but that they really feel like they, you know, have a voice. You rock, you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Thank you. Any other questions for Audrey? I'm going to stop.